This Battlefield Report will cover the events of the Second Intergalactic War from March 24th to March 30th. We go first to the Terminid Front, where last week the Draco Sector was 100% secured and operations were ongoing to complete the current major order, with only Hellmeyer left to conquer. But on Sunday, the Ministry of Science reported that they had detected a spike in Terminid spore counts and a severe increase in resistance on Terminid planets was expected. Nonetheless, Hellmeyer and Osha Une were secured on Sunday and the major order was declared a success by Tuesday morning. The last of the liquefied bugs had been processed into Element 710 and shipped off-planet, and medals were awarded to all those who participated in the campaign. But the fight was far from over. With supply lines opening, planetfall was made onto Nivelle 43 and Omicron, setting up for an offensive into the Lestrade Sector, a collection of bug homeworlds. But just as offensive operations got underway, bug breaches were detected on Osha Une and Hellmeyer, crushing the offensive's momentum. Ultimately, due to the spike in spore counts, the bug infestations would spiral out of control, and large-scale liberation efforts to reclaim the planets would need to begin. Because of this, supply lines to Omicron and Nivelle 43 were cut off, and all liberation progress there was lost. And finally, on Friday, yet another breach was detected on 4 e Prime, and Helldivers failed to contain it. Thusly, at the end of a week of back-and-forth bug battles on the far frontiers, the situation is mostly at a stalemate, having only lost some ground in the Draco sector. But no one in high command is concerned about the bugs this week, because the bot menace in the West has captured the full attention of Super Earth. This week, interrogation of captured bots revealed that the automatons are planning a major offensive, and they're calling it the Reclamation. But their target remains unclear. Some strategists theorize that they plan to push past Astotu through the Emir sector on their way to Cyberstan. But after they launched an attack on Mantis on Sunday, some say the automatons may be looking to strike toward the Theseus sector on their way to Super Earth itself. In either case, General Brash issued a new major order on Tuesday to secure further intelligence on this war plan by taking Troost which has been under automaton control since February 25th, and they were given 96 hours to complete the task. Intel reports suggest that Troost is the location of a deep space communication array, which, if captured intact, could help reveal the full extent of the automaton plan. Usotu, who some have dubbed Space Afghanistan, has been holding strong since March 5th, and through tremors and intense heat, more than 167,000 Helldivers took to the liberation of the planet crushing the automaton forces with ease by Wednesday. And moments later, boots were on the ground on Vandalon 4, which was also secured within 24 hours. And with staggering momentum, nearly 250,000 Helldivers swept straight through to Troost, and Super Earth's flag was flying high there by Friday morning. The Trigon Sector was secure for the first time since the beginning of the war, and a whopping 50 war medals were awarded to the triumphant Helldivers bug killers and bot killers alike who stood side by side, united and determined to spill oil against the automatons. Intelligence officers were quick to decommission the communication array on Troost, and early reports indicate that it was broadcasting outside the galactic frontier. But who the message was to and what it contained has not yet been fully deciphered. There was, however, an intercepted transmission of a blueprint for a new automaton weapon, some kind of aerial gunship. And with such a foe on the near horizon, our hard-working factory laborers have been instructed to accelerate production of new, advanced, anti-air weaponry capable of taking these new ships down. Implementation onto the battlefield is expected soon. With Phase 1 of Operation Swift Disassembly complete, General Brash wasted no time in issuing a new major order, this time to secure Tibet, which Intel suggests is the most significant remaining producer of automaton combatants. And by Friday afternoon, more than 125,000 Helldivers had amassed on Ubania, which had been in a near stalemate for the past two weeks, and simultaneously thousands of Helldivers were grinding away on Malevolon Creek, which has seen nearly non-stop action for the past 50 days. A successful campaign here could effectively shield Dropnir and Mantis from further bot incursion, but Helldivers could not act fast enough. On Friday, the automatons launched a surprise attack on Dropnir, and Helldivers scrambled to the defense of the civilians residing there, who had to be evacuated yet again. Loss of this planet would see the supply line to Ubania cut off and deliver a crushing blow to the chances of successfully completing the new major order. At the end of the week, three planets have been taken back from the automatons, but just when we were about to crush them under our boots, they've struck back with devastating force. And with their arsenal set to expand very soon, war may drag on even longer.
In other news this week, on Wednesday, a solution was found to the short-circuiting ARC weapon problem that surfaced last week. Some Helldivers rejoiced, while others were quick to seek cover. On Thursday, a special announcement was made by the Ministry of Defense that production lines had been finalized on two powerful new weapons to aid in the offensive against the automatons. The LAS-99 Quasar Cannon and the MG-101 Heavy Machine Gun have now been distributed galaxy-wide, and Helldivers everywhere are rejoicing at these surprise additions to the arsenal of democracy. The Quasar Cannon is viewed as an excellent anti-vehicle and anti-structure weapon, while the Heavy Machine Gun excels at taking down medium enemies. And finally, Super Earth mourns the loss of legendary Skull Admiral Okami Cheems, who was taken from us last Saturday on his birthday. Helldivers across the galaxy are paying their respects, and in a statement, quote, The Ministry of War would like to commend this Helldiver for his bravery, devotion, and sacrifice to the spread of managed democracy, freedom, liberty, and for Super Earth. He will be sent off with full honors. Would you like to know more?